Hi, my name is James D'Souza. And I'm Willem Vanhorst. And what do you do, Willem? I'm a brand strategist. Sorry, I'm Willem, a brand strategist. But you and didn't say I'm... you were a teacher, so I was kind of following the thing. I know, I didn't say I was a teacher. I'm a psychology teacher. And welcome to Teaching Tangents, where we go on explorations of questions that are big. And this season's three, season's theme is season... Th- ugh. Third this season. season's see how they're there. This we're is on like for a good were, episode today. I think. <laughs> this is like when you were trying to say teaching tangents teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. I know how much you love alliteration. Season sure. three, teaching tangents, episode six. And we're grateful for all the listeners because there are so many. We're grateful for all the questions and the reviews because we're we're swamped. We had a couple of comments as well. We're not swamped. You should send more questions, please. But yeah. we did have a couple of comments. Somebody actually listened to us when you said, please like post some comment, tell us what you enjoy or don't, mm-hmm. what you think. And it just was really great to have somebody give us some uh, well feedback, the fact that they enjoyed the show and had submitted a question. They were a yeah. good listener. Yeah, a very good be listener. A good, we, good listener or a good watcher. Send questions. Be a good teaching like the tangents question. listener watcher. Send your questions to me at hello at jamesdesouza.com because Willem has no idea what I'm going to ask him. And yeah, we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. Subscribe. Yes. Leave like us a five-star review. Exactly. Like the video. Please. All of that jazz. As we get into season six, season six, season three, episode six. Episode six, the question is, okay. why do you think people change careers? Why do I think people change careers? Um, it's money uh, obviously huh it's money obviously they change careers entirely money uh perhaps sometimes it sure it's one of the reasons um motivation uh well okay so obviously they change careers the main reason why is uh I, I, the top one is all something along the lines of i'm not happy with what i'm doing i think I'm just looking at my own experience. Yes, I'd go with that. I mean, some yeah. some way, shape, or form. So you change careers because of obligations. Uh, you change careers because you're not happy in what you're doing. You mm-hmm. change careers because you want to make more money, mm-hmm. for sure. It is also, I think, a reason why somebody might change their career. You change career because you have to. Mm. You know, your job doesn't exist anymore, and we've talked about that a lot. That's like the kind of references to uh, Professor Harari that we keep talking about. Mm-hmm. That's because it's one of the common references that there's going to be more and more. It's the likelihood of there being shorter careers and careers that need to change because of questions like robots and automation taking over the jobs and the careers that you have. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Make it that you need to find and convert and <clears throat> relearn. <clears throat> sorry retool and retrain in different ways um but overall i think the most people don't change careers until unless they have to i think now i don't have numbers on this to back it up and i think that we might be talking to or about in the last several episodes mm. of people because of us because you change your career because it mm. happens to some people but i think it's a minority the vast majority of people just either have a series of jobs and, you know, they'll change their job when they get fired because they're just, that's their means of making money. And a lot of Mm -hmm. people in the States, uh, in France, and probably in the UK too, and I expect in a lot of countries are living paycheck to paycheck, whether Mm -hmm. it's weekly or monthly, you don't have a lot of space to think about, oh, well, I'd love to change careers. You just... Mm -hmm. You know, you're behind on your rent or you're behind on some payments or you have enough to get by, but you're busy and you're taking care of, you know, your kids, your house, your stuff. You don't really have time to the, or the leisure to think about whether you're happy or not and whether you'd like to change careers. Mm-hmm. Some people do and they do when they have a massive change in their life. Mm-hmm. So if they're let go from their job, then there's like space and you're in France and there's a there's a. Um, unemployment benefits that are sufficient or training opportunities or possibilities to look at whether you could be doing something else 
because uh, otherwise I think the people, the majority, of, and I don't have numbers on this again, so I might be wrong, but it feels like I think it's a luxury to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm unhappy with my life choices and I want to change them. You need to have an environment to support mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Parents, maybe you're still young enough and living with your parents. Maybe you're, so maybe you, uh, or maybe something happened, like there was a lot of news about uh, workers and people during, and still at the moment, they calling it the great, um, the great resignation or the great reshuffling. Yeah. There's two people that I, I was just, I have some articles open to read that I have not read about that question of people. The great resignation was the one I saw. Yeah, and there's it. some, yeah. and there's one article that was all about, we shouldn't call it the great resignation, we should call it the great reshuffling because people, there's not that many people, they're, they're working, they're looking for other types of work, they're looking for better types of work. Um, so the pandemic was a forced stop that many people had never had before, regardless of the other types of circumstances that a lot of people might have been de dealing with, mm -hmm. uh, of having close ones or themselves being sick from COVID mm -hmm. or other kind of things and not having enough money, etc. But there was a, lot, a, a big effect of suddenly a lot of people had time to look at what's going on with their lives in a way that they mm -hmm. never had before. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's another reason of why people might change career. They have a chance to actually stop and look at what's going on in their lives. And this idea that we talked about before of like, you only have a career when you look back at a series of jobs and you look back at your life. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we don't look back at our lives. We don't have time for that. And we that don't was take episode time four. for that. Episode four's question was, when does a series of jobs become a career? Yeah. The, it's What's interesting about what you're saying is that changing career the well there's two things one is i'm reminded of one of our other common media references alan watts mm -hmm. what do you desire yeah. being a way of finding and creating a career that just seems can seem so far out there when your day-to-day -day is you need to earn money you need to take care of your family you need to put a roof over your head yeah and and i think i don't know if alan watts was also speaking to that world as well that you can he, he wasn't at all I don't, uh, I don't think so but go ahead so the so i'm reminded of, of that that there is a certain amount of luxury what does happen if you follow if you find what you desire what do you desire if you explore that question that's one side of the run reminder of what you're saying the other side is when i when after i graduate so i graduated in 1999 and then i started working and I was in my job as a marketing analyst. I remember reading that on average, people will change careers three times. Mm -hmm. That was some random statistic that was thrown around while I was, after I graduated, once I was in my first job. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if that's changed or increased, but- I heard seven I, but more recently, but, seven. I, don't, but wow. I, don't know, I don't even know where I'm pulling that number from. Okay. I You're saying, wow, and I don't, I don't know if it's real or if it's- <laughs> I mean, we could look online right now. I just, I think I heard it's going to be seven, but again, I don't know where that comes from. And I could be just completely making this up. It was definitely three when I heard about it. And that was a good, it was over 15 years ago. So it's the, and that's changing career, changing career, like doing something completely different, which fits with Professor Harari's idea of like, we're going to have to keep reinventing ourselves. And that requires resilience and self-awareness and emotional strength to be able to do yeah. so the, the this question is on the one hand about circumstances i think you change careers when you're forced to yeah so this site says 12 12 careers or jobs <clears throat> jobs 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 okay all right it would be difficult to to separate careers from jobs jobs is something so average person changes jobs 12 times in their lifetime, according to the latest available public survey data from 2019, and that's in the US, presumably. Um, because you've, I've definitely changed careers, I've definitely, I've changed careers once. Like that was eye opening statistics about the state of career changes in 2020. <clears throat> You've changed only 21% of college graduates use most or of most of or all of their education in their work and careers. 39% of people considering changes in career do so because of mm -hmm. better salaries. Mm -hmm. There you go. I told you that was one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, only about 14% of the workforce believes they have a great job and that would not like to change. 14. 70% mm. <clears throat> of the workforce is actively looking for a change in career. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was wrong. Like, so you do, you're actively, 70% well, of the workforce is actively looking according to this, this stat that I don't What's know. What's the source? From, but I don't know what that source is. Wait, um, I do know that Gallup talk a lot about employee engagement being awful. Mm -hmm. And that if you employ engagement, being employees who are really into what they're doing and enjoying their job. And if you have engaged employees, you're going to get more, they're going to be more productive, they're going to be more effective, they're going to come up with better ideas, solutions, all of that. And the Gallup do an annual survey, the state of the workplace, mm. and employee engagement is really low. And they turn it around and say, well, that's, it's up to good managers and leadership to provide workplaces that are engaging to get the best from people. And that's, so I think there's two, two sides to this question. Right. Why do people change careers? The, I can't find where that stat comes from. There's a whole really, long blog post I'll show. We'll show and we'll add to the show notes perhaps. Mm. Um, yeah, there's the top that has like bullet points of the stats that are just cited. And then there's more details, but I can't, find the detail of that particular one. Um, Gallup's work about employee engagement good. is interesting. It's very interesting. It does sound really interesting. And I, I believe on the Gallup thing is there's a, I suspect, and I don't know what the legal environment is, and it's probably different from one country to another, mm. but there's often, or not often, I think there, well, anyway, this is a suspicion, as I said, that um, the, the, the overall objective and interest of a corporation mm -hmm. of generating profit mm -hmm. doesn't always go in line with the sh short term um, getting them like squeezing the most out of your employees. So if you're thinking long, if you're thinking long term, then you would be paying attention to the stat from Gallup of, about employee engagement. And most companies right. are trying to uh, not most companies, some companies are putting efforts into doing that. Mm -hmm. In a similar fashion that, you know, if you if you're thinking long term, then you, it makes business sense to look after the planet to be more sustainable so that you have a business in the future. Mm -hmm. But the short term that says we need to increase profit next quarter. Mm -hmm. That goes against the grain of it, because most of the practices are going to be related to getting the most out of people. So they're and, you know, well, to get the profit or to get the results right now for this next mm -hmm. quarter and this next year, mm -hmm. you need to work late, you need to get your stuff done, you need to deliver on time. And we're going to like, so that leads to squeezing energy out of your employees. Now, I don't, I think that you, you can, well, I like to think that you can do both or you can like deliver on time without, you know, having horrible management practices. Um but there's also, I think a lot of managers are not trained for that and or not interested because that constitutes a change in behavior and changing behavior, as we've talked about in a bunch of episodes, is very, very difficult. Mm. Just like changing careers is very difficult. That's why, it, like assuming the stat we just looked at is correct, 70% are actively thinking about changing their careers, but they're probably, they might be thinking about it or might be saying, yes, I am actively thinking about it. Are you, are you doing anything to change career? No, to some extent, and I don't know if that's true or not, um, to some, because I don't think 70% of people change their careers, but I don't know. But how, I, for, I, for the reasons is, that we cited earlier, like, you know, there's the inertia of life that doesn't yeah. really, it's not conducive to changing careers. Yeah. And, yeah. or there's also a lot of people that have unrealistic um, expectations about what they'll be able to do. That makes me think of a good friend of mine who is a graphic designer and he does graphic mm -hmm. design training, including just workshops for people who are in uh, career conversions who are unemployed okay. and sign up to do a training in graphic design. And they barely know, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad, but they barely know how to use a computer. So in three days, he's not gonna make them into a graphic designer. There's no, that doesn't exist. It's not mm. possible. Mm. Um, Similarly, I had somebody, I, so I heard like recently about a company that hired a, uh, an intern, so a paid intern, mm -hmm. who was in their middle ages, in middle age, uh, a little bit older than us, uh, who was, again, somebody who's, you know, using his 
uh, training. Um, he had a budget for training while unemployed to to convert and change careers. And they mm -hmm. hired him under, like he said, he could use a computer in Excel, Excel, Word, et cetera. And turns out he doesn't. Wow. So, it, or at least not to the level that was expected in the interview when you said, I can use, I can use a computer and I use office, office, office suite. Yeah. Uh, so, and I don't, I, I mean, I don't know, but I expect that guy was not lying when he said he could use office. He thought he said he could. And then they put it in front of a computer. They realized, okay, this is not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I'm almost I'm reminded of the Simon, Simon Sinek video where he talks about millennials. And uh, the, I don't think I've seen that one. There's, it did the rounds a few years ago, mm -hmm. so much so that the principal of my school at the time played it to the staff as a way of kind of looking at what's, what younger people are dealing with. But one of the points he makes in the video is that some people, when they start a job, they, they expect to have big effects and make big changes. Mm. And he quotes how he was talking to a, a quote unquote millennial in their job. And they're telling him, oh, I'm thinking of changing, changing jobs, changing I think it might have even said changing careers, definitely changing jobs, because I'm not having the impact I want to have here. And then he asked them, how long have you been here? Three months. And there's that kind of, I do wonder if this kind of question about why do people change careers, it's also related to the level of expectation that people have about being able yeah. to get good at something. Yeah. Uh, I tried that. How long, how long did you do it for? I did it for three years. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe that's not, enough time to get good at something yeah <clears throat> and in three months you're not going to affect change presumably at the time he's talking to a young person yeah yeah he was talking what to I, what i really person. dislike about the labeling generations and calling them certain ways because yep. right now there's new stuff on <clears throat> gen z for the same reasons <clears throat> yeah that gen z are, are like staying the least amount of time of jobs it's, i don't think that's down to the, so the labeling makes you think that it's the generation that behaves in a certain way that is different. It's yes. just like, this is how young people are on one hand in general, mm -hmm. and this is how young people are facing what circumstances they have to face yes. now that were really slightly different from the last batch of young people a few years yep. ago. Yep. Um, so that's, that's, I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons I really hate the use of labeling of generations in the media. And it's also just, it's misleading and it's, redu it's reductive. Um, you're reducing and you necessarily reducing a whole like bunch of people to very base rate just and then you you led to a few years ago uh, I remember the uh, the headlines oh my god millennials are having kids now and they're just like everybody else they're buying houses and saving money and like, yeah they're 35 <laughs> just that's what they so in majority they will do that <laughs> oh look we were yeah. wrong they're not oh they're, because they're not young people anymore yeah so now, so, and there's, it's likely that, uh, like what we're talking about now, that there's going to be more likelihood of changing careers. Mm -hmm. And there's more of an expectation, but for whatever reason in culture, that you should be able to have an impact. And uh, also, unsurprisingly, for anybody that's young, it's like, well, mm -hmm. I want to have an impact right now. Mm. Um. And you're right, noticed... it takes time. And that goes back to the sword mastery or the mastery conversation that we bring back as well on career that mm. you should invest time. And I've said before in another episode that I'm a, uh, a, a good example of having changed careers several times and keeping up with my career, mm. but not of being an employee for a long time. Because, uh, and you know, and I don't pretend, whereas you, you are a good example of sticking somewhere, uh, but like yep. staying with the same company and being able to have an impact on the way they operate on the way the school operates. And part of that, I think is also because you've been there for a long time, you know, everybody, you know how it works in three months. You don't know how it works in three months. Mm. You, you think that you got the right answer, which mm. is again, it's not a generation thing. It's just being young. When you're young, you think you can know mm. better. Mm. So it's when easier I was a teenager. To, the grass I, is I always everything. greener. Yeah. yeah. No, not just the grass is always greener. No, no, not, not just that. I mean, when you're young, you think you know everything and you know better than the people who are old who haven't understood anything. So like, like, just let me, let me handle it. 
You know how teenagers and kids are like, I know, I know this. So I, you old I, person yeah. are, are completely lost. You've co- clearly lost the plot. Let me do the right, do, do it and I'm going to do it right. <laughs> I never felt like that as a teenager. I probably did. I did in my oh, maybe it's 20s. Just me then. <laughs> I did in my 20s. Through my 20s, I, I started, started to feel like I know everything. Then in my 30s, I was very much like, I should shut up and listen. Yes. I became a lot less... When I, through my 20s, especially as a teacher, I was, I would intentionally say, not, it's verging on horrible things because I was so arrogant. Yeah. And then in my, in my 30s, I've been, and through my 40s, I'm a lot more precise about what I say. I, instead of right. lobbing a hand, lo, instead of lobbing a hand grenade into a conversation, I'd much rather cut someone down with a laser. But, you know, it's there's still that. But it, it, this whole thing about I only feel like I, I actually knew what I was doing as a teacher after three years. And, and it was after and even now I'm like, I'm still have to be willing to learn and change. And, and, that, and I think that's part of what exploration and mastery is. And if I was jumping around from career or job to job, I'd never really get I don't think I'd ever get good at anything. Yeah. But there's also, so there's a lot in what you're saying uh, that is interesting that circles back to what I was talking about earlier on both sides, that to get good at something, you Mm -hmm. need to spend and invest time in it. And if you're going to change careers, to not underestimate the amount of energy and time it's going to take to learn something different. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of times we don't really have that kind of luxury, or it might, it might be disappointing Mm -hmm. that you realize that actually I don't, you know, uh it's very very difficult because you need somebody to give you a shot to change your career that's true it's the, uh, um... and then you need to show that you're able to and and it gets more difficult to learn new skills as we grow older There's our brains one... are plastic that's from the shallows right our brains are plastic throughout our yeah, lives they they're yeah. we're able they're malleable in the way that we're able to retrain to do different stuff including a career but it gets a little bit more difficult over time and, or we're more set yep. in our ways. So to put yep. yourself back into question, yep. Yep. Uh, so you have to grow. So from today, I'm not going to change my careers in, in a way that uh, would be drastically different. Mm. I mean, unless I have to, in which case perhaps, mm. uh, but um, what I mean by that, it's, it's unlikely to probably never going to happen that I'm going to stop and learn and study to go be a lawyer or a doctor at this point. Mm. Um, I might do something completely different and go work in a shop or use my body Mm. of experience to branch out and do something else which I would love to do um, writing writing exactly writing and be able to have like some published stuff that gets me some income during retirement for example and do a bit of consulting and, and a bit of teaching so, or teaching actually so you know as you know i've only been teaching since last year and that's uh that's a branching out based on the experience that i have because i'm teaching what i what i've been doing for a living uh what i'm doing what i am doing for a living um so that is a career change that uh is so i i think what i'm trying to say here is you you're building so as if, as you invest time in your career you're mm-hmm. building a foundation and a body of knowledge, practices, mm-hmm. and experiences that mm-hmm. you can draw on to then possibly change career. But if you change too soon and too fast, then you're not building that basis and that foundation. That's but a very also, point. regardless, and this is where I'm talking from uh, doing very um, uh, knowledge based jobs. That's yeah. my thing. I'm not really a, a manual worker, particularly. There's I've actually that's in a whole other side of things. Being a manual worker is use is is very tiring from a physical standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, so changing career manually is possible, but it's just that that is also that, that it takes a toll on the body when you're working hard with your with your with your body. Essentially, I'm reminded. I'm reminded of the butcher. Whole other side of things. Yeah, sorry. You're I'm reminded, reminded of what? The, your story about the butcher, the mm-hmm. master butcher. Yes, exactly. Yeah, getting exactly up at five thirty, yeah. all of that. Yeah, and he was seventy. Clearly, I mean, I th- so he was well not retired, but I also think yeah. he's the kind of person that I suspect would not know what to do with retirement. 
So it's the first time I saw him there. So I don't think he's there all the time. Uh, I, but so he's teaching. Yeah, and I expect if he's been doing that for 55 years, he, he seemed to be the kind of person that's like, well, what am I going to do? Just sit there? Just, you know, as long this as I'm is, able. Retiring is, it's, it's an, it is another stage of life. And it does, my parents really had to prepare for it. Mm. And my mum made that transition to retirement really well. Mm. My dad didn't. My dad had the same job working as a lab technician in a hospital for like over 30 years. He's very good, very interesting. Way. And he saw the, the, the job change from being very much about chemistry and in-depth understanding and knowing what to do, kind of diagnostic at a very cellular, literally cellular level to everything being done by computers, everything being done by machines 24 seven. And he kind of, he saw that change, but he, retiring was was hard for him it was really difficult and uh, something i've heard about is teachers have the highest rates of people who die when they retire out of any career oh really yeah and teaching teachers going back to the idea of skills that you learn i think i massively underestimate their skills you, i look you, i look sure. at the, the range of transferable skills that i have as, as a teacher is ridiculous yeah. the things the things we do as teachers are ridiculous that would be really valued in another career but teachers don't see their value and don't think of changing careers i as far as i can tell and yet there's loads of people who start teaching and leave the profession like, i know teachers are training to do something years. else in france there's a lot are there i don't know if there's a lot i know one who is right but, oh, okay but, they, but it's also a good example of the amount of energy and time that it takes She's studying to become a psychologist. Oh, wow. And um, that's an enormous amount of time yeah. in addition to her teaching work. Yeah. And that, like the amount of energy that you have to spend, you don't, so it just goes back to what I'm talking about. If you want to change careers, it does to, it's like not to underestimate the amount of time and energy it takes. And at the same time, I would believe that there's a lot of transferable skills for her and she sees that. Mm. Uh, and just I, you know, be dealing with other people all day to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something else I wanted to mention actually, yeah, which sure. is a there's a really great resource that I used when I was younger, and that my wife has used. I don't know if you've heard of it. Have you heard of that book resource called What Color Is Your Parachute? No. So it's quite a famous book about careers and about career changes. He talks a lot about the the things that you do demonstrate particular skills that could be useful to an employee an employer mm. as an employee but it's all about understanding <clears throat> the skills that you have if you want to change career and i think part of the reason why people might change career is because they think they have particular skills they want to use in another way that could that's an and which is i think related to this idea of becoming really good at something yeah. but as a resource, what color is your parachute is very well respected. It, will, it was a book that was updated every year. Mm. Now, I haven't looked at it for, for years. I'm sure it's moved online and the guy who created it has probably passed away because it was it's been it's, it's it was really famous. So but that's a really incredible resource for changing. So that's worth reading for careers. anybody who is thinking of changing their careers. It is. OK. But I'm just checking it is because it was a book and there's loads of really practical exercises in it. I think it's probably like a probably close to a really practical book version of Wait But Why. Okay. The, the website is parachutebook.com and it's positioned as the number one best selling career book of all time. Oh, kind of well, we haven't talked about that before. <laughs> no, no, I don't think we should. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why we haven't. I think well, I'm, I, come I, I didn't know before. about it. That's one reason I haven't mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it on the it, it's positioned as a your guide to a lifetime of meaningful work and career success. And okay. I remember stumbling across it when I was like eighteen or nineteen, not thinking much of it, and then no it was updated every year. But it, it really goes back. In fact, what you did, Willem, when you describe your career and how you change careers mm -hmm. is a lot about what he talks about in the book. Like getting to know what's needed, speaking to people, collecting information, 
slow, well, I mean, I suppose you kind of did it slowly, being able to make powerful requests and asking for things and making suggestions and listening, 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 going for things, taking risks, all of that. It's laid out really well in that book and hmm. changing career. And the other point I want to make is related to this whole thing about neuroplasticity. So you mentioned the shallows. The other book that I think is great is The Brain that changes itself yes i want to um, read that we've talked about it a few times but not on the show that much actually sorry no me. but we have the but when we do things repeatedly we get in a groove so as a teacher i i, I know about starting lessons i know about planning lessons and when i first did it it was really hard because i didn't have those brain patterns set up but the more i've done it the more i've got into this is the way it is which means that trying to change that is really difficult yeah. not impossible but really difficult and he talks about in the book and again this relates to evil and the learning another language changing countries changing cultures is an incredible way of staying sharp an incredible way of keeping your brain plastic so you've lived all over the world you're is it fair to say you're multilingual or bilingual i'm bilingual bilingual I'm not really multilingual. There's a lot of people that speak more languages than I do. I'm okay with Spanish, but I'm not really fluent so at all. So you've lived at, lived, at lived <laughs> different planets, lived in different, different planets. I've oh lived God, on I different planets. I definitely that. have. Just, I told we were, you not to tell people that. It's supposed to be a secret. <laughs> talking about Dune before this. You, <laughs> yes, we were talking about Dune just before we started oh, recording. Said, you've lived in different countries. You've experienced different cultures. Yes. And I think that's All that made to keep you, my brain plastic. Uh, yeah. It is. You're more adaptable. The things you've said that you've done, I'm just like, I could not do it. In at the deep end is not my style. And I don't so, want to anymore. That's why I moved <laughs> back here. I mean, it might happen, but I'm like, you know what? I just, I would like to actually experience sticking with something for a little bit longer than a couple of years or a few months. But you've been in the same career now for 15 years? Yeah. And you, you don't think you'll change? I, as I said earlier, I don't think I'll change for something drastic. That's where I was going with that. I will use the body of knowledge that I have uh, to evolve in what I'm doing. So like more teaching, more training, possibly. Mm. Uh, I'd like to do more writing. Did we talk about this on an episode or another conversation? What you just said about more sure. writing and teaching? We just, we, well, we, I was talking about that a few minutes ago. But we, you talked more in depth about you should do more writing. I think that was another conversation. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, I'm sure because I keep saying that I want to do more writing, but right now my writing is, is down to, uh, I'm, I'm uh, studying for a degree with my, the school I'm teaching at. And uh, that's where I should be putting some writing time in that I'm not really doing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm... For exactly all the reasons that I started, an un I started citing of why people might want to change career but don't. That's the same reason. I'm, I'm not putting the time and energy to progress on my on the uh, work okay. I need to do, which is like writing this very detailed and long. Um, uh, uh, the, the exercise I have to do is is a, it's a very long and um, we might have talked about this, but I don't think I've talked about it on the show. Uh, so there's a program. There are programs in France to validate your professional experience as a degree if there's an oh, yeah. equivalent. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so in order to validate that, the, I'm in the middle of it, and the step that I, that is right, right now, the very long and honestly very tedious for me, which is why I'm not progressing, uh, <laughs> is I have to write a very detailed account of my professional experience and make sure that I write it in such a way that it matches the skills that are required to validate the degree. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I have to explain, you know, well, because the, 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 the thinking is that if you're doing something in your career, it has been taught. There's a degree for that. That's this, that's the way the education is organized. <laughs> yeah. Because the education department of the country, right. It's saying, yeah. well, you know, clearly if you're doing something that is a job, a career and you're being paid Somebody for it, must you have, have been you. trained it's formally and there's a formal theory behind it. Yeah. So I can't say, well, I did that because it made sense. It was common <laughs> sense. Like, that's not an acceptable way to say that this is why you did that. I, I, yeah, I have to explain in detail what I did for that project 
and explain the references of like how theoretically did I learn to do the thing that I did. Wow. Okay. Oh. So it's uh, uh. so well, the first I still haven't started writing the thing. The thing's supposed to be 150 to 200 pages by the end of it. And I, I asked a friend who was doing who did something similar, and I was like, "Wow, why is it so long?" He's like, "Have you ever actually tried to write down what is being said in a meeting?" I'm like, "No, not really." He's like, "That's the level of detail that is required." So if you start writing what exactly everything that happens in a meeting, yeah, and you include the theoretical references of like why you said what you said when you said it, that gets long. And I was like, "Wow, this is what I need to do." It was like, "Yeah, literally." Like, all right, so we went to the meeting. I opened my laptop. I did this. I said this. No they said way. that. Because I'm doing something. And I said that, I know I said that we should do this media reference coming from the principle of that piece of communication that was talked about by this professor. Anyway. Oh, man. So, like, for That's... example, I was reading a lot of uh, advice about how to write those things. Yeah. And one of them was uh, there's a theory behind. So how did you organize the meeting? I was like, I was like, what? There's a theory behind how you organize a meeting. I was like, I thought you sent an email or called and told people and gathered them in the room. No, no. There's there's a theory behind how how and why you organize a meeting. And if you're if that's an important skill to cite as your for the degree that you're doing, you need to write down the the how well, running the why a meeting probably how. is it probably is a skill. Yeah, you know, it you is. And that's that was part of the advice that was like, remember that that's the kind of skill that's it's a skill. Oh, it is that you don't realize um, that you have, but also you don't realize that there's a theory behind it because a lot of it is common sense. But that's not an acceptable thing to write in your. I I do know I, people I'm who I'm repeating that, but you know. in teaching who don't know how to run a meeting, so it's it's definitely a skill, and it's definitely there's probably a theory behind it as well. Oh my word! Okay, that's because I'm doing something similar where. And I, and I am to... probably listing it in such a way that I get sympathy for the tediousness of the whole exercise, by the way. <laughs> well, I would find that tedious, but I'm doing something similar where I'm doing what's called a lead practitioner a qualification certification okay. with a body that's that works with lots of teachers. It's kind of a teacher certification certificating body. Okay. And what I have to do is there's a bunch of competencies that have different levels. So it works like a big grid. And then I have to yeah, I have show been. at different levels where I'm at and detail the evidence that shows that I've achieved that level. Yeah, it sounds very similar. I have that's exactly what I have to do. And I've I've come up with a research project and I've pitched it. Now th the cool thing for me is I always like everything to have a practical bent. And I think this is important for anyone who wants to change career is. Can you demonstrate how what you've done has had an impact on the institution you're at, the business you work for? If you can't, then what's the point of it? <laughs> and, that's, and that's part of the value of the exercise that I'm doing, or at least that's the stated value of yeah. looking back at everything that you've done. So to, to remember and look at the value and what you've learned and what you're good at, which is uh, there's a part of the exercises in the Wait But Why post that mm -hmm. we keep referring mm -hmm. to that is a little bit similar. Mm -hmm. um, in order to remember that you have, and remember and look at the fact that you actually have built a number of skills and where is your where are your strengths? Yeah. It's just like the person who posted a comment about the, uh, about the, um, the episode of when, when does a series of jobs become a career? they were able to look back and realize that they did have a career, even though they didn't think they did. Yeah. At first. Um, and I think so in this, this exercise, you're looking back at like, what have I done? And so if and I know this is not exactly the question, the question is why, but if you want to look at where you could change career and what you could be doing, uh, looking back at what you've done so far and building on your strengths is probably a good idea rather than saying, well, I would like yeah. to go do, graphic design because there's a career and money opportunities which might be true but it might have nothing to do with what your existing skills are and yeah. so to have a look at whether this makes sense for you and what you're good at because built you i mean it, it makes sense to build on your strengths and uh, other reasons why people why why they change career why they want to change career i think there's the whole happiness and satisfaction but you mm -hmm. also cited a a, a quote, um a stat from another episode about the 
there is the wanting to learn and being fulfilled, like we're wanting to learn. There's not something like that about people want to, uh, what was, I remember you saying something like the number one reason that I? people, I, I'm not, maybe I'm making it up, I can't remember. The number um, one, the, the biggest reason, the biggest thing that influences people being satisfied in their job is their yes. relationship with their boss. Okay. The relationship with their manager. That's all over Gallup's research. Hmm. I'm I'm not sure, quite sure what you're. Thinking. No, I was thinking about whether um, there are opportunities for to keep learning when you're when you're working. I remember reading something like that, but I, but I can't remember where it comes from. That there's that as long as you have opportunities to keep learning and developing yourself, mm -hmm. you're gonna, there's opportunities to be satisfied in the job. So the, another reason why you want might want to change a job is you feel like you've done everything possible with it. Mm. And the funny thing of what you described with your father. Uh, about you know everything be auto being automated there's no mm. there's no useful or valuable skills provided by the person the person just becomes then another cog mm. uh mm. and and like a, a modern times charlie chaplin movie where you're just like just screwing co cogs and then you don't have any value to bring and you don't have the experience of doing something that is valuable and you're certainly not using your brain in any kind of way you're not trying to solve problems you don't and that's there's a lot of what's I think is sad on the automate on the automation side of things mm -hmm. is reducing the person to a a, a mindless skill that you mm -hmm. need to have performed, and you that's why you're hiring somebody. You're not hiring them for them and for the value they bring. You're hiring them because they're a warm body that can move things in a certain way that a robot or an algorithm can't just yet. Mm. Um, now, that's not all jobs. There's a whole category of jobs that are like that. Uh, and I, I think that's part of what the author of the BS Jobs book that I mentioned last time. Mm. Mm. But did you notice how I... I yeah, I did. I did. Very, <laughs> I yeah. acronymed. Very, I, yeah. Acronymed. Acronymed. Acronymized. Acronymized. I don't know what the word is. It's not exactly a verb, technically. Turned it into an acronym. Word. Turned it into an acronym. Um, is that the... There's whole, uh, there's like entire whole series of jobs in offices mm. that don't really have much value. They only just, what well, they don't, you're just pushing paper around uh, mm. and organizing meetings. And there's layers of people, which I think during the, during the first lockdowns also, there was a lot of people that realized that their jobs were not essential mm. to the company operating. Mm. Uh, there's a whole layers of middle management. And this middle management is a broad term on purpose because it's not very clear who's valuable or not. But yeah. there's a point where that all right, everybody's working remotely, and there are some people that realize, well, wait a minute, actually, I'm I'm not necessary to the work being done. It feels like because mm -hmm. my job seems to be that I was, you know, making sure people were doing things, but now they are actually doing the things, and they're doing the things from home. What am I doing? <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I'm completely just, I've gone somewhere else to tangent, but um, well, that's actually, that's a, a, uh, that said, where I do land on, that's possible reason why people might want to change careers. Yeah. If they realize they're not useful or valuable. That's, I think that's where, where I was going with that whole thing. If I'm not learning, if I, if my skills are not valued and mm. if I'm not mm. like using my brain in an interesting way or my body mm. in an interesting way, mm -hmm then why am I doing this? So you might just be doing it for the money and for the time. And of course you are to a certain extent, because otherwise why do it? Um, but I think people need to be engaged and need to have the, well, they, they need to have the experience of providing a certain amount of value or else they're going to go yes. look for another thing. Yes. And I think that certainly in the time that I, since I graduated, that I think there's been a shift from where the responsibility for creating fulfillment in the job and fulfillment in the career comes from. Yeah. And I think that that goes to what this question is about. Like why people, why, why do I change career? Cause I want to be more fulfilled. Cause I want to provide value. Cause I want to earn money, whatever the reason is that shift has used to be much more. I could look to someone to create that. Not anymore. I have to find that the emphasis yeah. is now on me and knowing my talents and skills and knowing who I am to be able to go and find that. No one's going to do it for me. Yeah. No one's going to come and rescue me. No one's going to come and tell me what to do. I have to go get it. Yeah. And I and think that, that was very different 25 years ago. 
Uh, yeah, I think so. But it's interesting in what you said, the number one reason is your relationship with your boss. And I think for a lot of people, they expect yeah. and imagine that, that then that responsibility is over with your boss. Yeah. But actually, and you said this in a previous episode, uh, I can't remember which one now, like a recent one, on okay. your experience of working internally with your company, with mm -hmm. your school, about taking mm -hmm. responsibility, writing something, putting an offer to them, so you're not giving the problem to your boss. You're saying, all right, so I'd like to do this and I have a possible solution. I think it might have been episode three where we talked about his career or discovery or creation. Yeah. It might have been that one. But yeah, if and and I realized that doing that is unusual. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, isn't that what we're supposed to do? No, apparently. Well, most people, people wait. Think. They wait for their bosses and imagine their bosses are doing that for them. <clears throat> yeah. And part of us talking about that here for anybody willing to listen, and I tell that to my students as well, is that don't wait. Mm. Take responsibility for yourself. Like it's not your boss's job. You, they think it's the boss's job, and it's not. Your boss's job might be to get some other kinds of results done. And ultimately, while I think it's good for a manager to be concerned with, the, with whether their employees are satisfied, Mm. ultimately there's also i think it plays back to what i was saying earlier it's not really their prime responsibility like the, their prime responsibility is going to be likely for you as an employer to deliver certain types of results ideally if they're mm. a good manager that might be concerned whether you're satisfied and whether you're doing it in good conditions mm. but their first job is not to make sure that you're happy is to make sure that you deliver the results that you're supposed to deliver yeah and if you're not happy, then go and talk to your boss about it. But they're, but they're, but then come, don't come to them with only the problem. Come to them with yeah. some kind of idea of a solution as well. Yeah. Because they can't know for you what will work for you. They can try. They can attempt things. I know that was not that was not very elegantly put. No, I no, um, I. But they, I don't. I think this goes back to the work of uh, that we've mentioned a bunch of times because those are our common references for the season mm. of. Alan Watts, what do you desire? The most difficult thing is to sit down and look at like, what is it that I want and desire? Mm -hmm. uh, all the work that is in the worksheets from the Wait But Why to Brimbin Post about how to pick a career and look at like, what is it that's driving you is similar. And if you don't do that work, then you're putting all of the onus on your boss and saying, well, it's not working for me. And they're like, well, I, I, okay, mm -hmm. let's try something different. But then they're going to turn the question back to you if they're a good manager and go, okay, well, what do you need? Mm. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think it was phrased badly. I thought it was a really great question. I don't remember what it is, but it really made me oh, start yeah. thinking about me as a manager. Well, it was, it was really well put together, I thought. It, it was because it was, if I want to change career, why do I want to change career? Or if, if the, a lot of the time, the, the reason why people want to change career is because they think could be the relationship with their boss. Yep. Okay, but then what am I doing that if they're going to come to me and ask me so how can what can i do i need to know i need to have something to take to that yeah i wish i could remember the way you said the question because it really got me thinking it, wasn't it was like I, I felt it was not as elegant as i as i could have been but it doesn't matter it will move on it was um, a really good question and, and that uh, to change anything regardless and that goes beyond the why mm. uh is takes an enormous amount don't underestimate the amount of effort and energy that it takes Mm. And then, then, then there's a whole swath of people that might change jobs because they have to. They've been in an mm. accident. And they're not able in the same way and they need to change careers. Um, and then out of need and money, obviously. Yeah, because I, I do know people who've had multiple redundancies in their career. And to come back from that, they found very difficult. It's very different difficult. Different stages. It's, it's very, very it, difficult. What it did was it actually forced a questioning about what what am i good at what value do i provide yeah. what what do i say as my skills are yeah. what have i learned in my career so far and i think yeah like we keep saying self awareness and what your skills and talents are is a really good thing to keep a list of and to keep yeah. aware and, and, of. It, and it is very very difficult if you're thinking of you know somebody who is working in a factory their whole life because the factory is the biggest employer in the town where they live and mm -hmm. that factory closes and gets relocated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
that how do you it, it's easier on paper and theoretically if the government goes like all right well, we're going to put money into retraining but that might not match mm -hmm. the opportunities that you have in wherever you are lo like locally placed and working in a factory for X amount of years on a CV doesn't look particularly amazing. How do you change from that? It takes, it's, it's really, really rough. Mm. Um, so anyway, but, but the reason why you might change career is because something happened there. And so, and that work that goes into, but I do really believe, however tough that is exactly what you said. And that's what we keep talking about all the time that it's worth looking at like, you know, investing time and effort into looking at what you're good at and self-awareness mm -hmm. in general, like who you are and what's going on that you could bring value. Because I also believe that you, you as a person who have this fictive person that we're talking, fictional person that we're th talking about is worth something over and above the fact that you had experience in the factory and, and mm -hmm. you have developed somehow some kind of skill set mm -hmm. that is worth building on. Or, or you have a hobby outside of work. Um, but what's for sure is that it's going to take a lot of time to be able to change career is going to take a lot of time out of TV and Netflix time. Oh, oh my God. I was getting so irritated with the, the two classes that I teach. Right. They, were, they were saying to me, oh, we've got so much work to do. I don't have time. I was like, okay, hands up if you binge watched a TV series over the holidays. Like... 80% of the class put their hand up and some of them will go, yeah, I watched two. That's, well, that's at least 10 hours of your life yes. watching TV and you're telling me you don't have time. Come on now. Oh, I remember that. It was my form who are 15, 16 year olds who are going to be taking their exams in the summer. Oh, I don't have time. Yes, you do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah I have, I have, I had a similar and I wrote a very long message late at night. My, my students asking for, can we change what's being requested for the assignment? Because it's it's too much. And I'm like, no. What? <laughs> <can't do> that. <laughs> the next step is requesting eight pages of their whole memoir written. And they're like, well, that's it's very difficult for us. I'm like, so can we can we just do an outline? I'm like, no, no, that's not <laughs> the structure Welcome is the same structure the for all of the fourth year students. <laughs> you can't change it. And I wrote a very long, very that's... thoughtful message about everything that was expected and what's going on. But like basically, uh... if you don't show up with those eight pages written, don't expect to have a grade like that, that goes <laughs> along with it. <laughs> that's like questioning at a fundamental it's level it's, it's awesome i was like about it. it's fantastic <laughs> we found we find it very difficult and yeah yeah i appreciate it, it might be difficult but that's what's requested <laughs> and that's it's meant so to be funny. a draft but it was very i thought it was uh, the message was very funny it's only going to get more interesting as they get older yeah <laughs> and then there's the pressing realization of like i waste a lot of time Oh yeah, I waste so and much flicking time three TV. things so much. Yesterday afternoon, I could have done something. Well, so I was going to say productive. For example, work on the the, the exam thing that I that I need to work on. But get, I felt kind yeah. of tired, and it was Saturday, so I just went out for a walk, and I read in the park. Now I did read, so I was like, okay, so I haven't progressed with my book in a little while. So at least I was like, all right, I did read, so that's good. Uh, plus points there. Yeah. <laughs> Take the plus not points as, that you can. Not, not, as, not as strong plus points as if I had spent two hours working on my, my degree uh, studies. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm just like everybody else, of course. I like to waste time. And we, watch we are. Obviously. We are like oh, everybody else. It's getting darker else. all of a sudden. It's going to rain, I think. I think we've, we should wrap we up. Should, we should wrap up. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> season three, the theme has been is career i say has been like we're coming to the end of the season in fact we might I be think we might be season. coming to the end of the season yeah we've done this is episode six and the question has been why do you think people change careers for, it's there are so many reasons but it always comes down to own your career take responsibility and learn more about yourself yeah you have something to contribute everybody does yeah thank you